In the mid-1980s, a brutal satanic serial killer was on the loose in California. Police discovered disturbing pentagram symbols left behind at the crime scenes. Pentagrams were found on the inner thigh of one victim and on the bedroom walls and bathroom doors of other crime scenes. Witness statements from those who had survived the attacks also said the serial killer would demand swear on Satan you won't scream. Then police finally arrested Richard Ramirez and it appeared that his reign of terror was over but the serial killer still wished for the world to know that he walked with the devil. My name is Sheesh Merriweather and I'm the founder of Crime Viral Online. Today I'll be doing what I do best which is talking about serial killers. This video is all about Richard Ramirez, serial killers and Satanism explained. But first, here is a treat for all you true crime fans. Magellan TV is a new type of documentary streaming membership founded by filmmakers. Their team of producers and curators brings together premium content that dives deep into important documentary subjects. Magellan TV has some of the best collections available in true crime, history, science, nature and space. There are so many great choices, it's hard to stop watching once you start. There are over 3,000 documentaries to choose from and new programs are added on a weekly basis. Even better, there's a growing selection of shows available in 4K without additional cost. You can watch Magellan TV on any device or connected TV. You can cast from your phone to your TV, it's super easy to use. So check it out now, click the link below to get a full month free. This week I've been binge watching Weird or What with William Shatner. There are 20 episodes available all about the mysteries in the world. Science fiction legend William Shatner investigates all that's weird in the world in an attempt to find a logical scientific explanation. Once you head down this bizarre rabbit hole, you'll find it covers everything from alien encounters to life after death. Now let's get you back to the serial killers. Serial killer Richard Ramirez was an energetic and outgoing boy who grew up in El Paso, Texas. Nobody could predict, looking through these childhood pictures, that he would grow up to become a sexual sadist. His parents, Julian and Mercedes Ramirez, went to church every Sunday. They believed in the virtues preached by Jesus Christ and they acknowledged that Christ had a very powerful enemy, Satan himself. Aged 13 years old, Ramirez started to read books about Jack the Ripper and he began to idolise the serial killer. He gained a huge thrill from learning how the serial killer stalked his victims at night on the foggy London streets. When he read about Jack the Ripper stabbing his victims, he also became aroused by this. What is happening during these crucial teenage years is what we call cognitive mapping. A distinct thinking pattern is developed in the mind and that creates a loop. So for Ramirez, that is fantasy image of mutilated women, desire to depersonalize and destroy, sexual gratification gained. These cognitive loops are difficult to break once it's embedded in the mind. With therapy it can be undone, however Ramirez always kept his thoughts private. Similarities in his MO between Jack the Ripper's crimes and Ramirez's later crimes were The serial killer was able to maintain control of the victims during the initial blitz style attack. The serial killer removed body organs from the victims. Ramirez later removed the eyeballs from one victim. Jewelry items were taken from the victims. The serial killer spent a considerable amount of time at the crime scenes and the time of the murders was in the early morning hours. Also around this age, his cousin Mike had returned from the Vietnam War and he showed young Ramirez photographs of the torture and mutilation of the Vietnamese women whilst he was out there. We do have another video on this channel all about Richard Ramirez and the influence of his cousin Mike. We'll put the link below and you can check that out as well. Now Ramirez is torn between pleasing his God-fearing parents and also dealing with these violent images in his mind. So he turns to Satan to deal with these difficult emotions. The Church of Satan was founded around 50 years ago by Anton LaVey, the author of the Satanic Bible. The nine satanic statements detail how Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence, vengeance instead of turning the other cheek, and that sinning should not be repressed if it leads to gratification. 
Later, when Ramirez moved to Los Angeles, he also indulged himself with an insatiable cocaine habit. He began committing the brutal murders at the very height of this drug addiction, whilst truly believing that Satan was his guiding force and with him at all times. He also believed that he could avoid being killed himself or arrested so long as he stayed evil in his heart and showed no mercy. With Satan on his side, he believed all the hell he unleashed on the world was now justified. Ramirez believed that his dream woman would also be a follower of Satan. And he was attracted to women who wore pentagrams because if the woman he seeks out a relationship with also follows Satan, then he won't be judged. They won't think he's strange or weird. Those who are unwilling to see themselves as evil once their crimes have been exposed instead seek to place the blame on an outside source. Many serial killers, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, Ian Brady and John Wayne Gacy to name a few, all speak about this internal battle between good and evil. When Bundy was sentenced to death, he told the court, I cannot accept the sentence because it is not a sentence to me. It is a sentence to someone else who is not standing here today. Bundy by no means is implying that they have the wrong man, rather due to his episodic personality, he just means he was not the murderer in that moment. One of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims, who luckily managed to escape, later testified the serial killer acting possessed, rocking and chanting in his company. Moore's murderer Ian Brady also said he was detached from himself when he committed the child murders, almost as if he was watching another version of himself carry out these horrendous crimes. And John Wayne Gacy later claimed in his defense that his other personality known as Jack Hanley was in fact the real killer. If there was ever a priest in the courtroom during the trials of these serial killers, they would have no doubt have said the devil did it. Yet we know through decades of research on the subject of evil that the answer is a lot more complex than that. This evil entity they believe is controlling them is rather a symptom of their dualistic personality, more likely stemming from childhood trauma. The serial killer will not fully recognize themselves as evil because there are personality flaws that they have tried to repress for so long. Creating a separate personality makes it easier for them to carry out these sadistic controlling fantasies without the uncomfortable feelings of guilt haunting them later on. That's the good evil complex at work here, God versus Satan. When Ramirez was first arrested, it was reported that he looked like a spooked deer. His worst fear had just become a reality. His strict God-fearing parents now knew of his awful crimes. Then after his first appearance in court, Ramirez started to receive bags of mail from other Satanists who praised him and said that he was cool. Zena LeVay, the daughter of Anton LeVay, visited Ramirez in prison during his trial. She was accompanied by her then boyfriend, Nicholas Schreck, who was missing an ear as he had previously cut it off to show Satan how dedicated he was. Zena told Ramirez they were all praying to Satan and they were making him an honorary member of the church. Another admirer who wrote him letters and visited him in prison was fellow Satanist Eva O. She would tell Ramirez how much she admired his courage and she also shared with him her own fantasies of death and mutilation. Eva O revealed that she slept in a coffin every night and she rarely came out in daylight unless it was very important, like visiting serial killers in prison. All of this gave Ramirez a huge boost in his confidence. He always had a very poor self-image, yet the support from other Satanists made him feel like he was back in control. Ramirez then snarled at the press, he would shout out obscenities during the trial, and he also, as a nod to his Satanic fanbase, drew a pentagram on his hand and cried out, Hail Satan. Up until that point, anyone who had previous doubts about Ramirez's guilt was absolutely certain he was the serial killer who had terrified Los Angeles for so long. Ramirez had also received a lot of mail from Christians, Protestants and Catholics, all willing to convert him, but he had no interest in these letters. In 1989, he was convicted of 13 counts of murder and sentenced to death. Yet leaving the courtroom, he had some final words for the press. 
He said, big deal, death always came with a territory. See you in Disneyland. Do you think Ramirez turned to Satanism so he could deal with uncomfortable feelings of his own? Or do you believe the devil really does walk this earth? Let us know in the comments below what your opinions are. And also don't forget to like and subscribe because we'll be back with even more serial killer content.